we are taking chapter number 1 which is electric charges and fields so we'll be discussing about electric charges and fields the facilities which we are enjoying today in the modern age is because of the technological development and uh, from all kinds of energy this electrical energy it's very important for our comfort and this electrical energy has a very you know important property that you can store it it can be transferred to different forms of energy so you can say that the electricity is mother of all the technologies even your mobile has uh, some charging so electrical charges these are the foundation of electricity we are going to study about the static charges their properties and the interaction between them and this study is known as static electricity if you see copier machine your laser printer television you will find static electricity there even the natural phenomena like the lightning is also can be understood by knowing the static electricity what is electric charge electric charge any matter any matter whatsoever it contains fundamental particles these are more than 100 you know fundamental particles are more than 100 and out of them three are of prime importance to us one is electron then proton and then neutron so if this is a nucleus it contains proton it contains neutron it's a neutron is neutral and then outside in orbit we have electrons orbiting because of the masses of these particles they exert gravitational force we know there is a gravitational force always for example two electrons if they are kept 1 cm apart they exert 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 67 newton gravitational force on each other which is attractive gravitational force is always attractive but an electron is found an electron is found to repel another electron so what is this force why this repel or repulsion is going on if you keep it at a distance of 1 cm the force would be 2.3 into 10 to the power minus 24 newton this is the force by which these two electron they repel so what is this additional force there is a gravitational force we talked about but there is another force which is known as electric force the fundamental intrinsic property the fundamental intrinsic property due to which this force act is because of the charge of this electron because of the electric charge so as the masses we know that the force gravitational force is given by m1 m2 by the distance square and of course we have a gravitational constant g since mass has, masses are playing role here in the gravitational force the charges are responsible for the electrical force if you do the same activity with proton that is two proton they if they are placed at 1 cm they will repel with the same force 2.3 into 10 to the power minus 24 newton right that means proton also has electric charge and the magnitude is exactly same as the electron the forces between the two electrons now if you do something else if you put a proton and now an electron and you keep them say 1 cm apart then what happens again they exert this much of force same force on each other but now the force is attractive between electron electron between proton proton the force is repulsive but here the force is attractive so what we conclude here is the magnitude of charge on electron and proton is same but they are opposite that is why i am putting plus here and negative here so electric charge are of two types positive charge a negative charge and traditionally we have considered this proton as positive and electron as negative it makes no difference but we'll see and we'll follow this convention for our next discussions the force which is acting between 
two like charges like the proton and proton they are repulsive electron and electron repulsive but a proton and electron they are attractive so all the material bodies they contain equal number of protons and new uh, protons and electrons in their normal state that is they are electrically neutral at this time right but the electrons as i just showed you electrons are outside because this is a nucleus electrons are outside so there is some outermost orbit where always some electrons are present and they they are moving they are orbiting so whenever there is an exchange of charge between two bodies says because of the friction there are these are these are loose electrons and they will transfer from one body to another say if you take a glass rod and if you rub it with a silk cloth rub it with a silk cloth some of the electrons from the rod will get transferred to this silk cloth and the glass rod will become what because the electron has transferred from glass rod to the cloth glass rod will become positively charged because the electron has gone to cloth in the same way the cloth will gain some electron and it will be negatively charged in order to detect these charges we have a very simple device which is known as electroscope we call it as a electroscope so electro electric charge is a fundamental property just like mass just like mass the charge is also electric property and the si unit of this charge is coulomb will abbreviate abbreviate it with c capital c so what is a coulomb a coulomb is a charge which is flowing through any section of the conductor in one second when the electric current now is 1 ampere so the charge on proton is this one 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and the charge on electron will be same value with a negative sign minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb conservation of electric charge the algebraic sum of all the electric charge if we have an electrically isolated system will always remain constant will always remain constant any process may be taking place so this is law of conservation law of conservation of charge so if we have electrically isolated system the charge can neither enter the system from outside nor escape from the system from inside any chargeless thing it can enter or leave the system if you remember the glass rod and silk cloth example if before rubbing glass rod with silk the net charge on both of them was actually zero and after rubbing the glass rod with silk cloth the glass rod becomes positively charged because the electron electron have moved but the same amount of electron which has his which has moved has gone to silk cloth so if you see because of the friction as well the net charge is same is zero because the number of charges which has gone from electrons which has gone from glass rod to silk cloth the before and after there is no change if you want to uh, understand the conservation of electric charge this is uh, the conservation of electric charge see the initial charge in this box you know it has very thin walls is zero initial charge is zero q is zero so we have a highly energetic photon which enters here in a box the photon is chargeless the photon is chargeless particle and as this photon is entering the box it produce, produces an electron and a positron electron this is electron and this is a positron electron is this the electron is this minus and positron is the same charge with opposite sign so after the pair is produced in the isolated system the net charge again is zero because one is e plus one is e minus they are e equal charge with opposite uh, signs so the initial charge was zero this was zero and after the event also the charge was zero so the charge was conserved in other words you can say that in an electrically isolated system only those processes 
are possible in which the charges of equal magnitude and opposite types are either produced or they are destroyed. Like in this case, and only the electron or positron can be produced, means created, and this is possible, and this is only possible because there is a conservation of electric charge always. Charging by induction. If we consider two isolated sphere, two isolated sphere, they are insulated at stand, one carrying say net positive charge Q, this is positively charged and other is having no charge, it is neutral, no charge. So if they are brought in contact, means if they are touched, what will happen? Like say you can connect them with a conducting wire, you use a wire. So, some of the electron from the chargeless sphere will transfer to positively charged because this is positively. The electrons from here will go here because they are attracted to this positively charged. So, what will happen? The positive charge on the positively charged sphere will get reduced and the chargeless sphere will become positive because the electron has gone here. So, it will become positive. This will become positive. Electron has gone here because it is losing electron. Now, this will happen till what time? Till the time the charge here becomes Q by 2, the charge here becomes Q by 2. Right? So, Q by 2 electric charge, when we, when we contact them, when the charge becomes equal, then only the uh, transfer of electron will stop. There is another method of charging the object, and in this method, the in this method, the charge body does not lose its own charge without coming in physical contact with other object. Actually, it will induce opposite charge and this is known as induction of electric charge. So, how does it happen? See, this is uh, showing an isolated metal sphere. The net charge here is zero. Now here, we are bringing a negatively charged plastic rod close to this sphere. What will happen? Because this is a negatively charged, so all the electron, they will get repelled and they will come here, move away. But since this is negatively charged, all the protons will come on this side because they attract this negatively charged, okay? They attract this, neg uh, this negative charge. So, what will happen here? The this side, the side which is close to this rod, this close to the rod will become positive and this side will become negative. Right? So it will have this side will have a deficiency of electron, and this while this side will have deficiency of proton. You can say that, or you can say because the electron are only moving, so you can say there will be an abundance, abundance of electron here. So now let us uh, ground it. We are grounding it and we, when we ground it, all the electrons here will be grounded, will go here and they will be grounded. Means they will leave and they will reach here. If you remove this grounding, then only the positively charged or this positive charge will remain because the electro, electron have gone here to the ground. So now, when you remove this grounding, all the positively charged, positive charge, we dist redistribute. And this is how we induce the electric charge. So, the same thing which I showed here, because this is the way we induce the charge. We are just trying to liberate this, uh, say, object from the electron by grounding. And all electron will go to the ground, only positive will remain. So, this if you remove this, only this globe or this uh, object will only be retaining the positive charge. This is induction of electric charge. Coulomb's law. French scientist Charles Coulomb, he measured electric attraction and repulsion between two electric charges. He did a many, many experiments and he also deduced a law that governs 
these uh, you know the outcome of his experiments and which is known as coulomb's law so what is the coulomb law he said that the force or the electric force also known as coulombian force between two stationary point charges is directly proportional to directly proportional to the product of their charges if this is q1 this is q2 then this force is directly proportional to the product of their charges and if the distance is r then it is inversely this force is inversely proportional to the square of r to the square of the distance between them and the force is along the line joining these two charges so this is the coulomb law if you show it mathematically if the, ch the charges are q1 and q2 and the distance between them is r so f is directly proportional to q1 q2 by r square directly proportional to q1 into q2 inversely proportional to r square so if you remove this proportionality sign we keep some constant and this k constant is coulomb's constant and the experimental value of k was found in vacuum to be this number but practically we take this number as 9 so it will be 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square in cgs unit this k is 1 so this this is the value which we are going to use and for more simplification of this formula in electrostatic say k if you want to represent this in the electrostatic term this k can be represented as 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 and here we have 4 and pi and there is one thing called epsilon 0 and this is nothing but epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space so k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 this epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space so now the equation becomes what if you take epsilon if you take epsilon here k this side and put k value k value as we just discussed it will be some value epsilon 9 into 10 to the power minus 12 uh, to make it make it approx the force will be given by k k can be written as 1 by 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r square and these are in vacuum now this epsilon 0 is for vacuum and you if you are taking some medium not vacuum but if you are taking some medium not vacuum then you can put this epsilon 0 as epsilon of that medium so now the force for that particular medium this force was for vacuum let me write it as fv so this is now force for some medium it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon now it will be epsilon not epsilon 0 this is for medium and q1 q2 by r square now let us take this one 1.3.2 and 1.3.3 let us divide them so fv by fm fm all other things get cancelled only epsilon by epsilon 0 will remain and this is a special term or this is a special um, ratio we call it as epsilon r which is equivalent to k so now what is the relationship this fm or you can say that if you want to find out the force electrostatic force in any medium you just have to divide this f by k so what is this k this f is it is the force electrostatic force in vacuum between these two charges and k is what epsilon r is the relative relative permittivity what was F, what was epsilon r just see epsilon r was epsilon by epsilon 0 it was epsilon by epsilon 0 which we wrote as k so epsilon r is called the this is called the relative permittivity or you can call it as k which is the dielectric constant k is the dielectric constant dielectric constant so we'll talk about this in the later discussions but now it is clear that the force between some charges two charges here which is which are at some distance apart say in some insulating medium is only 1 by kth part 1 by k that is f by f m was k so f m in any medium is just this force in the vacuum divided by the k which is dielectric constant or this fm is the kth part of f 
in the vacuum. So we have to remember that Coulomb law holds only for stationary point objects. This law also is applicable for charge objects whose sizes are uh, much smaller than the distance between them. And Coulomb law, if, if you see, this resembles this resembles inverse square law of gravitation. The charge Q plays the same role as the mass play in gravitational force. Let me write it again. F equal to G m1 m2 by r square. This is force, gravitational force. And what is the electrostatic force? Let me write it as G. Electrostatic force is K. Q1, Q2 by r square. So they are almost identical. But the gravitational forces are always attractive. But electrostatic forces can be attractive as well as they can be repulsive. Because the electric forces, uh, the electric charges are of two type, positive and negative. The repulsive force between two particles of same mass and charge separated by a certain distance is equal to the weight of one of them. Find the distance between them. Mass of the particle is given, charge is given, K is given, G is given. So what the question is saying, the repulsive force between two particles, which is K, Q1, Q2 by R square, is equal to weight of one of the particles. So let us take it as M into G. Weight is M into G. So what do you get? Take R on one side, others on other side. And uh, since the, they have same mass and same charge, you just have to put this K which is given, Q1, Q2 is given, M is given, G is given, G, G we are taking as 10 meter per second square. And R can be found out by taking the square root of, root of this number. So, R is 0 0.12 meter. Two spheres of copper having mass 1 gram each are kept 1 meter apart. The number of electrons is in them is 1% less than the number of proton. So, if proton is P, then electron will be electron will be 1% less. So, you have to take 1% and just subtract it from the original. I will show you how. Find the electrical forces between them. The atomic weight of copper is this one. Atomic number is this. Avogadro number is also given uh, per mole and K is also given. So if you have a neutral atom, a neutral atom, the number of proton, say number of proton will be equal to number of neutron, number of electron, sorry. This will be okay. They are equal. And what are the number of protons? These are 29. So number of electrons are also 29. So these are 29, these are also 28. Now it is given in the question that the number of electrons are less than how much? How much? 1%. So the net charge on each atom is what? First we will find net charge. That is the total charge on proton and total charge on electron. So total charge on proton is 29E. The total charge on electron is minus 29E, which are, we, are, we are just trying to exemplify, exemplify and say here that it is 0. Why? Because it's it's number of proton and electron equal but what is the difference the difference is the 29 is the number of proton and we are taking 1 by 100 of this 1% so this will be 0 0.29 so we have to subtract this with 0 0.29 electron and this gives you you can take e e e i'm not taking take, taking e as electron it is a charge because we have already taken plus and minus sign so this is negative, that is the number of electron which is 1 by 100 of this charge. So this is uh, because minus of minus, this will become plus. So this is 0 0.29e, this is just 1% of this as given in the question. So the net positive charge on 1 gram of copper, copper will be what? We have to find the number of atoms in 1 gram of copper. This will be found by the, the Avogadro number divided by the atomic weight. We know this number of atoms how to find in one gram of copper we know this how to find and multiplied by this many charges there so this is the total charge now we'll apply the electric force uh, formula f equal to k q q both charges are same by r square that is k q square by r square q now this q has to be taken this whole number complete so take it here square them and this is again r is one the distance uh, is given as one meter 
and one gram is there so we found out for one gram and this is the number if you simplify it so in this uh, example you see even the difference of one percent between the positive and negative charge on, a, on any substance will give rise to a very very large force and most of the matters in general they are electrically neutral so there is always a dominance of weak gravitational force on them charge q is uniformly distributed over a body how should the body be divided into two parts so that the force acting between the two parts of the body is maximum for a given separation between them so we have a body say this is a body we divide it into two say one is this and one is this two parts we have divided now suppose the body is broken into two parts uh, the case is because the whole charge is capital q if we say this has q charge this will have q minus q charge right so the force what will be the force force will be q1 q2 by r square so q into q minus q by r square in k but if we want this force to be maximum this q this whole prop this whole value has to be equal to zero so q into q minus q equal to zero we need to we need to do it this has to be maximum right this uh, has this quantity has to be maximum so how to find that this quantity is maximum if i say y is equal to q and capital q minus small q this quantity has to be if f has to be maximum this has to be maximum how to find for what value this will be maximum we have to put this as zero no the de de derivative of this value should be zero because derivative will show that it has to be zero so that it becomes maximum so we'll take the derivative of dy by dq means dy by dq this will be q into q minus q square we have to take derivative with respect to dq d by dq and you get q minus 2q which is equal to 0 and this gives you q equal to capital q by 2 this is the answer so we have to divide them the charge should be half and half between the two parts coulomb law in vector form see force is a vector quantity so now coulomb law can also be represented in the in this form vector form so as you see here let us take uh, r1 this r1 and r2 these are the position vector of this charge q1 and q2 we have a cartesian coordinate system so we have x here y here z here so they are, these are three axes and this r1 and r2 are the position vector for this q1 and q2 and we say this r12 r12 this is a unit vector which is pointing from q2 to q1 means r12 is pointing from this r12 pointing from q1 to q2 to q1 this this is the okay now you have to remember this we we have to we are going to use these all so q2 to q1 is r12 this is r1 this is r2 what does this coulomb law says coulomb law says that the force is equal to k q1 q2 by r square and r12 now if you have to place it in terms of vector so we have to take this as a vector and we have to put a r cap here means a unit vector so this r12 is what see this is r1 this is r2 this r12 is nothing but r1 minus r2 we know this how to find out by triangle law this r12 this is r1 minus r2 we have to take a magnitude so this is the distance between these two so we have a distance here so what is the distance r12 which is given by r1 minus r2 this is the distance between these two charges q1 and q2 and what is what is r12 this is a unit vector so how to find the unit vector in the direction from q2 to q1 the unit vector is always found by the vector itself that is r r2 r1 minus r2 divided by the magnitude of r1 minus r2 so we have to divide the r1 minus r2 by this magnitude now how this uh, force will become this is k q1 q2 and r12 in place of r12 we will we'll place this one r1 minus r2 whole square and for un unit vector this one will replace this one so this comes here so what this becomes k q1 q2 r1 minus r2 by square and one more so this becomes q okay 
So a formula will become F12 equal to KQ1 Q2 by R1 minus R2 whole Q by R1 minus R2. So this is equation will be valid for any sign. Why? Because we have a mod here for positive or negative. If Q1 and Q2 are of same sign, either both positive or both negative for any sign of charges, whether they are positive or negative. What is F12? This is along R12 because this we have taken R12 as a vector. So force will all, always be in this direction. So this is a this R12 from here to here and this is uh, showing a repulsive force. Now if uh, this Q1 and Q2 are opposite sign, we have taken Q1 and Q2 are of same sign. If now this Q1 and Q2 are of, of opposite sign, what we have to do? We have to take F12 as F21. So F21 will be what? This will be not in this in this uh, R12 uh, sign means R12 arrow will not be there. It will be instead R12 opposite negative. So this is showing that there is a attraction between opposite charges. So the Columbian force on charge Q1 due to Q Q2 can always be replaced. You, know, you can say F21 will be what? This will be simply R21. Previously we took F12, here we took F21, so what will be this one, R21 and same expression will become this R2 comes here, this R1 comes here, this R1 comes here, this R2 comes here. So it will be just replaced by R2, R1 will exchange places. Now this R21 will be not from Q2 to Q1 but R21 will be from Q1 to Q2. So this is now F12 was this side, F21 was this side. Now F212 will be on this side along this vector which is actually R21. So this R21 is a unit vector from Q1 to Q2 and you can just say R2 minus R1 as minus of R1 minus R2. So you can just because this will not change this will be only uh, you know this is modulus but this will change R2 minus R1 if you replace by R1 minus R2 this will be a negative sign so there will be there will be a negative sign. So this will be simply equal to this was f this was f12 so f21 becomes minus of f12 and this is also agreeing with the newton third law so this f21 is saying that there will be equal and opposite force and will be in the negative direction so this is the first part of the discussion we'll be taking few more of these. Till then, thank you so much and take care of yourself.